Good morning, everybody. Um, so welcome to a rather full uh, but quiet uh, showroom. And um, uh, <laughs> so at least we're taking advantage of being able to show you around um, uh, a few different bits and pieces that we've got. So we'll have a look at the stock. Uh, we'll have a look at um, we'll have a look at a couple of cars, start a couple of cars, um, and basically you're gonna have a good nose around and ask any questions that you want to ask. Um, we've got a few bits and pieces out um, to show you. Some things are a little bit different. Um, I don't think that I'm, uh, I mean, we're all completely car mad here. So although we, um, although we love our Aston Martins, um, we love a bit of everything. Uh, and the weirder and the more wonderful, the better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll start at the top of the showroom. I'll flick this around so you can see. Uh, here we go. Uh, and I'm going to do that. How about that? There we go. So you can see what I'm seeing. So this is... Try and keep my hand as steady as I possibly can. Uh, this is our showroom. All nice and neat and tidy. Um, and I'm going to start showing you uh, this first car. So uh, I've, I've, I've always had a love of Rapides. Um, I think it's the car that Aston Martin did probably one of the worst marketing jobs on um, in terms of their, in terms of their getting their dealer network excited about it. Um, I think when it came out, it was really expensive. People didn't quite understand it. Um, and because they didn't understand it, they didn't do a very good job of selling it. Um, today, uh, they're 45,000 pounds upwards, which is just bonkers for a car that was, you know, 150,000 pounds back in the day. Um, uh, my view on them is that it's, and I, I, and I have to say, I have personally run two or three of these um, over the last five years. Um, I've got two children, four, six, Mrs. McGurk, all the rest of it. And we, we would go away in the repeat, push chair in the back and luggage and go to Cornwall for, you know, four or five days or something. Um, you can... You can drive it like a GT car. It hustles like a sports car and it goes like a rocket. In fact, their latest uh, uh, S um, was very secretly uh, close to being a 200 mile an hour car. Um, not something they wanted to shout about because of course the Vanquish is supposed to be top of the tree as far as Aston are concerned. Um, but, the, but there's no doubt that the Rapide was something really, really special. Uh, and going back a couple of years ago, whenever you go to Aston Martin uh, and you pull up at where all the executive directors park their cars, um, Andy Palmer drives one, right? Reitman drives one, David Richards at Aston Martin Racing, they all drive repeat S. Um, and that's got to tell you something um, about the kind of car uh, that it is. Um, there, it's, it's, it's a super rare car. Um, and I think, I think that it's the kind of car that if you've got one of these, um, you'll be the only kid in town that's got one um, sort of thing. And I kind of like a little bit of that. Um, and there's all... Oh, I say all the mod comms. Um, Aston were never very good with um, their in-car entertainment system. They've always been a little bit backwards with it. So uh, from a you know, Bluetooth streaming music point of view, um, you've always had to have some sort of modifications thereafter. They've always been a bit backward with it. But, um, but I mean, what's, what's not to like about that as a, as a cabin? Um, it's got all the B&O hi-fi system that jumps up at you out of the dash. Um, nice contrasting stitching on the doors. More and more speakers. And then everyone can fit in the back. And believe it or not, you can get four blokes in the back of this. Um, I've done it. We go to London to watch the rugby and stuff, and we can all pile in, pile in the car. Um, and um, and then in the back of the car, in the boot, you've got quite a lot of area. Not four blokes in the back, only two. Uh, oh, oh. But that's, that shelf falls down and that gives you a great big, that's quite a lot of area to, um, to put a load of luggage in. Get a nice view through the back of the car there. TV's in the back. Quite smart stuff, really. Quite smart stuff. Um, DB9 running costs. So they're not completely bonkers in terms of, um, uh, in terms of running costs. And um, you can get winter tires for them. And actually, so and I, I ran my car in the snow with a set of winters on it, it behaved quite well. Um, and then this is a, this is a, uh, this is kind of entry level DB9. So for up to, I don't know, 35,000 pounds or thereabouts, that's the 19,000 miles from new. Um, we sold it to the previous owner back in 2007, would you believe? Um, and we bought it back off him um, not that long ago. Um, like a few of our cars in here today, you might notice the odd, 
bits and odd, odd blemish with them, but um, we're so far behind with our preparation work at the minute. Um, but this, this is as we bought it, really. It's got full Aston Martin service history, mostly with HWM. Um, and uh, for, for £35,000, it's not a lot. Um, I mean, it's, it's hardly been used. It's ridiculous. Um, as you can see, you can see the, the state of the interior. Now, I always think that with, I always think that with, um, uh, with these cars at this age, you can paint a car and refresh your car and make it look like new from the outside really quite easily. Um, but the interior of a car is a, is a totally different ball game. So once, a, once the interior on a car is worn, there's not a lot you, know, you can do to make it look like a new pin all over again. It makes it a really, really difficult thing to do. Um, it's time consuming, it's expensive, um, and you're borderline trying too hard. Um, so when you're looking at the wear on a seat, that's, it. that's how you'd expect it to look. It hasn't been conlized, it hasn't been touched, it's just an original, that's just an original car, exactly how it should look, really, for the age and mileage of it. But it's a load of car for the money. And again, I mean, annual servicing costs on one of those. If you, if you budget, if you budget £3,000 over a three-year period, that should be there or thereabouts. Um, uh, annual servicing is about £800. Um, and you're going to assume that you're only going to need annual service in the first year and then your running costs will step up a little bit in the second and third year with tyres and brakes and bits and pieces and depending on what, what you want to do with it. But that's quite a lot of car um, for not a lot of cash, I think. Um, and then we've got next to it a, a facelifted um, DB9. Nice to have a car with some cream interior. Um, you'll, notice, <laughs> you'll notice that most of the Astons are, are grey, um, with black leather. It's very 007. Um, Daniel Craig and Pierce Brosnan have got a lot to answer for. Um, but I love contrasting colours on cars, and I love cars with different interiors. Um, contrasting stitching on this is gorgeous. It just breaks it up. It makes it look interesting. Lots, lots of things to look at. And it's got a bit of piano black wood on the top of the door, a nice light roof lining as well. Lots of electric gadgets, and it's a bit—it's a later car, so it's got a few more gadgets and gizmos on it. Twenty thousand miles. That today is a sixty thousand pound car, and they come with ceramic brakes and all the um, and all the trimmings. Um, and then we've got a couple of advantages, and again, entry level Aston Martin Vantage is now, um, thanks to last year's uh, automotive. Um, uh, recession as such really I mean the automotive industry last year had a good old wallop um, and prices fell pretty hard classic cars modern cars you name it uh, and we haven't experienced that for a good 10 years so now you could buy this uh, 2006 V8 Vantage um, 30,000 miles and it's 28,000 pounds um, it's only had three owners from you it's got a full Aston Martin history uh, what's not to like about that um, Vantage is a great fun to drive um, and, you know, as I say, 28,000 is kind of your starting, starting figure. You will find cars on the market a bit cheaper than that. Um, but you've got to bear in mind who you're buying the car from uh, and how good is the car underneath. It's all very well with how it looks on top. How does it look underneath? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not a bad purchase. And to answer the question about ceramic brakes that I just saw, um, a set of ceramic discs on the front of a DB9 or anything else is going to cost you about eight and a half thousand pounds, give or take. Um, whereas, uh, whereas the early Vance's, of course, uh, there's pre-ceramic, so they're all, um, they're all steel brakes and, uh, and what have you. Um, so in fact, now I'll show you inside this, what have we got here? Awaiting preparation. So this is another one we've just, we've just, we've just bought. Oh, hang on, flopped. That caught me up. Let's see if it's open the side. That's better. There we go. So that's uh, V8 Vantage interior, manual gearbox. Uh, and again, this has got contrasting stitching, which is nice. It kind of splits up the interior. If it was all one colour, um, which people, some people like, but I personally prefer uh, a bit of stitching. I think the seats are lovely too. They're very comfortable. It's a 2007 model year. So you can see with these seats, move my fingers out of the way, um, you've got a gap in the headrest there um, and the seats are a little bit wider, whereas 
This is a 2006 model year car, and you can see the difference in the seat there, look. This is actually a little bit more of a wraparound seat. Um, they're, both pretty, they're both quite comfortable, to be honest, and it's personal, personal opinion as to who prefers what. No right or wrong with any of it, to be quite honest. Um, but the interiors are slum, but not massively. You'll notice the armrests are different too. Um, Bluetooth became an option on these later cars. Um, there we go. Uh, and of course, DB9, DB9 Volantes have always been um, uh, really popular. Um, not, not that many of them built. Um, they held the money really, really well. And if you went on to Auto Trader today to have a look to see how many DB9 Volantes you can find, there won't be many to choose from. Um, Blue Tour de France, so it's a, it's a Ferrari colour originally, special orders, uh, sandstorm interior, lots of stitching, emblems on the headrests, um, and just an all round good looking car like that. I think it's lovely too. Um, but yeah, no, I like, and again, again, you've got blue exterior, you've got a light interior. That's a good looking car. Good looking car. And the later DB9s, you'll notice, have got this kind of flip tail. If you can see that on the boot lid there, look. Um, back in the 70s, there was the Aston Martin V8 uh, Vantage, and they uh, launched a car called a flip tail. Um, uh, and it was exactly that on the boot of the Vantage. Uh, I did wonder whether it's some sort of homage to um, to that early car. Um, so let me do So that car there uh, is just shy of eighty thousand um, pounds. It's sub ten thousand miles from new. It's only had a couple of owners as well. Um, so um, that's that's a pretty good looking. That's a good looking car. Speaking of good looking cars, this. This is one of my favourites. Now, this is one of the last, that's not one of the last Vanquish, but this is a Vanquish Volante, it's a 2013 car. So it's six speed gearbox. Um, and the feedback that we get from clients and everyone's, it's each to their own. The feedback that we get is a lot of people prefer the look of this to the DB11. And interesting now, you'll pick up a DB11 for less than 90,000 pounds and the Vanquish Volantes not the coupes, but the Volantes are still 95 to 100,000 um, pounds. People will say, uh, we like the lines, the lines of the car, it's far more Aston. And if you look, I don't know if I can get this on the camera, but you see where the side strake is here, and you can see all the lines that go down the side of the car like this. There's a lot going on. Look at the, look at the line around the wing. There's a lot going on with the design of the car. It looks, I, I think it looks absolutely knockout. Um, lots of carbon. Lots of carbon fibre down the front, around here. I think that's a really pretty car. And, and it, they still seem to um, command uh, good money. Now this is, this is an interesting car. This car is Skyfall exterior. Um, and the interior, this is called Deep Purple. Now, each to their own. Um, when, we, when we had a phone call from somebody saying, do we want to buy a car with Deep Purple interior? And they sent the photographs across. And no matter how many photographs they sent, and even now, as I'm looking into my phone, the, the, pic, the picture that you can see versus how it looks to me in my own eyes, uh, not through the phone, still looks a bit different. It, look, it looks a little bit darker. Um, anyway, so I went to see the car, and I just fell in love with it. It was special ordered, Q Branch, all the quilting. Um, it's all special ordered. It's exactly how the guy that designed the car was doing exactly how he wanted it. And I think it's absolutely, yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's absolutely knockout. Um, and because we've got cars here, most of them have got black leather interior. When we get off at a car that's got a different uh, interior, I just can't help. I can't help myself because it's just such a lovely, lovely thing to see that's a bit different. Um, came with matching luggage, which is quite smart. And I don't think you can see on the back of it, but I just, again, I love the back. I love this spoiler. You've got a little lip spoiler there that goes through like that. I love the wraparound lights. I think they just look absolutely brilliant. Um, again, loads of carbon fibre, carbon fibre all down the side as well. Uh, and in fact, I, don't know if I, can get a, I might go and get a key. I think we could start this, we might start this car up in a minute. But I think that I think that's absolutely superb car. And I think that going, going forwards, it's going to be really interesting to see where they sit in the marketplace in terms of value. 
Um, because I think that's a I think that's a good looking car. Um, and then um, I'm going to get the kit. We'll start that in a second. I'll come back to it. This is a DB7 uh, GT. Um, GT being manual gearbox, which makes this thing a really really rare car. Now we spoke a minute ago about um, about the market and how the market wasn't so clever last year, and a lot of the classic cars uh, lost quite a lot of money. Um, and what have you. And these have fallen back a little bit too. Awesome, thank you. These have fallen back a little bit as well, but on the whole, they are very, very good car. Very, still very sought after, but they are having a bit of a price adjustment at the minute. Um, but they will be going forwards, uh, again, a car to be, um, a car to watch, I think. Um, right, I'm just gonna hand this over to someone. I'm gonna jump in this bank question and start it so you can hear it. How was that? Is that better? <laughs> okay. Um, where did we get to? Right, DB7s. Um, so, yeah, DB7 GT. So, really rare car. Manual gearbox is important. Um, if you want to, I mean, the, the, the thing about the DB7 GT, uh, uh, Jeremy Clarkson uh, did quite a lot about the DB7 GT on Top Gear back in the day uh, when they came out. I think he, did he drive it with a Ferrari 5? 50 Maranello, um, I think, maybe, or a 575, you, you, someone know better than me, but I'm sure he did. Um, this is, um, this by comparison is uh, DB7 Vantage Volante. It was a 550, wasn't it? I thought it was. Uh, DB7 Vantage Volante. Um, this particular car, this is so Aston Martin. The colour is Aston Martin. The guy that bought it from you, the specification is enormous. Uh, and again, this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm going to get all classic Aston now for a second. But the original Astons, so the Zagato conversions, this has had, if you can see that, a rear end uh, Zagato conversion, which means it's got to have a new bumper, uh, new rear tail lights, uh, and a lot of work underneath to get all that to fit. Um, exhaust system as well. Look, there's the, there's the rear, there's the reversing light, the fog light reflectors. A lot of money goes into doing that. Um, and this particular car, even, if you can see, he, he actually put, he took the rear seats out and put a shelf in, look. Because he just wanted, he wanted to drive to the south of France and back uh, with, his, um, with his good lady wife. And um, that's how he wanted it. So he fitted, uh, back in the day again, Tom Tom. Uh, and this thing cruised up and down the south of France for most of its life. Um, but I, do you know what? I, I, I think if you're going to have one of these cars, uh, and it's a car of the era of the late 90s, 2000s, this particular shade of green, this colour combination is that's the kind of thing. Um, that's the kind of thing you want to go for. I think I really like that. Um, back to Bond again. Um, so Vanquish. We've got on the left the black car. This is a Vanquish S. So this is the bee's knees of the last of line of uh, the Newport Pagnell hand-built Vanquish. This particular car's one owner from new and only done 6,000 miles. It's going to be the best of the best of the best. Um, and remember earlier on we were talking about interiors uh, and how the interior of a car will tell you all you need to know about it. Listen to the gearbox priming itself, ready to go. It thinks we're going to go for a drive. Um, if you look at these, just look at, look at the seats. Look at how they are still. It's a matte finish. It's not shiny. Leather becomes shiny when it gets sat in a lot and used a lot. So things like where where people touch around the steering wheel, where elbows go on door pads, everything looks worn really quickly, and that looks like a brand new pin. 6,600 miles. This car's lived in a temperature-controlled environment um, uh, it, its entire life, and, and it 
boy does it show. Um, this car was one of the late cars, so you can see the, a very familiar DB9 looking uh, centre console, sat nav screen, um, and just a few more of the modern DB9 uh, trimmings than the earlier cars. Again, a very, very different look to these earlier Astons. A bit of a flip tail again on the bootleg look. But I'm, I, I do like these. I think that these cars are super, super popular. Whopping great big brakes. So, £120,000 uh, for a one owner, 6,000 mile Vanquish S. And I have to say, I think that's the best car on the market at the moment. Um, and then sat next to it is one of the earlier cars. So this is a 2002 uh, Vanquish. Instead, two plus two seating. Open that door, that bang into another car. There we go. Two plus two seating. I say two plus two seating. You'd be going some to get in the back of one of these, of course, but there are two seats in the back there for two very very small people. Um, and then that, that's a nice place to be. Uh, look at that dash. Lots of uh, familiar Ford, Jaguar, parts bin type conversation uh, um, bits and pieces. But it was, uh, it's all very necessary back in the day. Nothing wrong with it. It all does exactly what it says on the tin. And that today is a £75,000 car. And the mileage on that, remind myself, 20, yeah, 28,000 miles. So that's in 28,000 miles, lots of Aston history. That's a really, really, really good, uh, that's a really good car, you know. Um, and again, Bond cars, talking about values and things, Bond cars have always done really, really well. So uh, the Vanquish, the DBS, the early classic, of course, DB5, goes that saying. Um, but they've always done very well. Um, so yeah, watch this space. This little thing. <laughs> this little thing um, has been in a barn for the best part of, I'm going to say 15 to 20 years. That might be a slight exaggeration, but it's not far off. Um, it's a kit car, um, uh, a Technic, Technic kit car. Technic is the name of the company. Martin and Walker were the two guys that did these cars. They did a fantastic job um, of these cars. Um, and I fell in love. We did, we did, I don't know if you, any of you have noticed, but we did quite a lot of the three, five, six speeds, the replicas, um, which we used to build over in the States and in Portland, uh, which we don't do anymore for various reasons. Um, but uh, that, when, we, when I saw it, I just couldn't help myself. And do you know what the weird thing is? I, when this was painted, when it was new, the paintwork would have been gorgeous and brand new and everything else. But look at the finish of this. Now, you, I mean... I suppose you could have a wrap or something to create that effect, but you'd be hard pushed to paint it like that. And I don't want to touch it. I love the fact that it looks old and a bit knackered um, because it's just kind of in keeping with what this car could have, would have, should have been. Um, and, you know, I love the fact, I mean, look at this. It's got cracks in the paintwork. It just looks old and just and tired. And I, and I love it. I think that's, I just think that's kind of how... You know, you have, the, 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 you have classic cars that have been refurbished and they're brand new and they look gorgeous. And then you've got the classic cars that have been pulled out of a barn and look like they've lived in a barn. And I quite like that look. I quite like the fact that it just looks like it's been used and it's had a hard life and it's got sort of scratches and bits and pieces on it. And I don't know. That's just me. Um, that's, we're asking £25,000 for that car. Um, there isn't anything else on the market to compare it with, which makes it tricky. Um, but it's, I just think that's a really cool thing. The, the, it's a fiberglass body, a couple of seats, a couple of harnesses. Um, since, we took it, since, we, since we took it on, um, we've, we've done some work to the wheels. It's got new tyres, new brakes, uh, new fuel tank, fuel lines, brake lines. Um, we've treated the chassis. We've done a load of stuff to it. Um, because, you know, you want the, un oh, obviously the underneath of it's got to be right, but um, I don't really want to do anything with the top of that. I think, that's, I think that looks absolutely, absolutely spot on as is. Just something different. Just something different. Um, back to Vantage Roadster. Back to Vantage Roadster. Um, optional wheels, 2009. This is the, um, uh, this is the, the slightly later 4.7 engine car. 
Um, there we go. Manual gearbox. A bit more black leather for you. Contrasting stitching. Do you not like the wheels? It's interesting you should say that. Interesting you should say that. But I think that's, that's not bad. Not bad. And, it's, and again, this is entry level Vantage money. 4.7. That's, that's a £39,000 car. That's, again, that's quite a lot of car. Quite a lot of car for the money, I think. Um, back to Bond again. Back to Bond. A bit of um, this is this is a later um, DBS. Uh, it's a Touchtronic, not a manual. Um, but um, this car belonged to Aston Martin Edinburgh when it was new, and then uh, owner number one uh, bought the car and didn't go very far in it. Uh, it's done about nine thousand miles from new. Um, and that is beautiful. That's beautiful. And again, look at the interior. Look at the leather. It, the seats. It's hardly been touched. It's just absolutely lovely. Two, two plus two seating. So there are two seats in the back there. Nice bit of piano wood on the dashboard. That's the back of the car. Uh, we're asking £90,000 for that car. Um, two owners, 9,000 miles, lots of Aston Martin history, mostly with um, Harwoods in Chichester, if I remember rightly. Um, the previous owner was... Um, how can I put this? I think, I think if I said he was a, uh, um, uh, a yachtsman, is that the correct... Or a skipper, I'm not sure. But one of the two. And he, um, he's one of the only people to have sailed round the world twice in both directions. Am I getting that right? I think I am. Um, uh, quite an incredible fellow. Um, but, uh, 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 yeah, but that car is just absolutely lovely. Um, E-Type. We've just sold a series. We had a Series 3 Roadster, uh, a white car. I don't know if anyone had seen it. Uh, absolutely stunning. And we'd sold that. And then this car arrived almost as, um, as one went out, one, one arrived. Um, I love E-Types. Uh, I can't help I can't help myself but love E-types, really. Um, I grew up in Coventry for most of my life. Um, and we do have, as you say, yeah, we do have a few E-types from time to time. Um, uh, I don't actively go looking for them. Um, but when, they've, when, they, when they fall into your lap, so to speak, and they are of really lovely quality and condition, then um, why not? Um, and the history on this car is really well known. Um, uh, the guys at Sturgis Jaguar over in Leicester know it very, very well. Uh, manual car with an overdrive um, XJ6 gearbox, which was an add-on later. It wasn't an option on the car at the time. But, um, in fact, funny enough, the, um, the, uh, the, the previous, I say the previous, one of the previous owners, I think it's had six owners, um, got in touch with us. He saw it online, and he, he wrote to us and said, oh, this is my old car, and gave us chapter and verse um, on the car, um, which, was, uh, which was absolutely fabulous, and told us he was the guy that upgraded the gearbox back in the day, um, and um, uh, yeah, just, uh, just, it's just nice when that sort of thing happens. Um, to answer the question that's just been asked about sailor return, I'm not a fan of sailor return. Um, uh, there are a couple of cars in here that I don't own, um, this E-Type being one of them, um, but no, I, I, own, I own the stock. Um, I, 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 think that, I think that commercially, for me, um, I, I like to own the cars, then if people want to make me an offer, I can make a decision there and then. I haven't got to ask or phone a friend. Um, uh, it's a better way of doing it for me. And, and I like to think that it passes on to my customers a bit more faith. So if I'm, if I'm saying I think it's a good car and I've bought the car, um, then hopefully you can have the same confidence that I have. Um, I just I think that kind of makes putting your money where your mouth is, isn't it, a little bit? Um, now, changing the subject a little bit, um, and this is, where, uh, this is where my car lunacy um, uh, uh, comes uh, comes into play. Um, so first and foremost, this is our this is our race car, um, uh, Lotus Cortina, 1966. Um, we this should have been our third year with it, but obviously um, it's not it's not um, it's not turned a wheel. Um, it's I, I cannot tell you how much fun um, that car is to drive. Uh, of all the cars, you know, I mean, different people love different cars. So whether you love supercars, whether you love 
I don't know, whatever. For me, there's nothing more thrilling than having a rear-wheel drive car. I don't want any ABS, no traction control. I just want a steering wheel. I want a throttle pedal. I want some brakes, and I just want as much fun as I, as I can have. Um, and, and this thing, for me, uh, it, it really ticks the box. And, and I must admit, I've always had a bit of a, um, I've always had a, bit of a penchant for, uh, uh, for Capris. And, um, uh, and when I was looking at what car do we want to go and race, uh, and, of course, I looked at Volkswagen Golfs, uh, I looked at Capris, we looked at a whole load of different stuff, but because the classic touring car um, race, racing is such a thing and it's so popular, um, you know, we started to look at that and then we started to look at maybe we should get a Mini uh, uh, or I don't know. But anyway, the, 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 this, this, the Cortina was what, where we ended up. So, little story. So, the Cortina was built by a guy in Wales. Um, he built it himself in his garage. Um, his name is Mr. Jones, uh, and when I went to Mr. Jones' house, which is in the middle of nowhere in Wales, um, he had the race car, and he also had his road-going um, Mark I Lotus Cortina. Part, they were parked next to each other in the garage. This guy was an engineering uh, wizard. He made everything in the garage himself. He did an absolutely fantastic job of the car, um, and, uh, and, and when, when we started racing it, you know, uh, we realised... Um, what, a, what, you, what a great job we've done. So I'll give you a little, little peek around here. So my, uh, my pal Justin um, has uh, done some uh, co-driving uh, with me when we've been sharing the car at some of the race events and things. And that gives you an idea of what it's like inside there. All pretty bare. Um, no creature comforts. It's really, really noisy. A um, lot, of, lot of echo, a lot of resonance from all of the... Uh, Everything that makes a noise in here, but look, look at the full roll cage look you've got to have. This is an, it is an Appendix K FIA approved specification race car. What about 800? About 800 kilos? No, it's, uh, oh no, you're testing me, 750, uh, 756, I think it is. Something like that. So yeah, not far off, but um, that gives you an idea. Yeah, so it doesn't weigh a great deal. The doors are all pretty hollow. Uh, let me show you the boot. Oh, no, no fuel tank. The fuel, <laughs> fuel tank fuel tank's missing. It's got, it hasn't got an engine in it either, because the engine we took, um, the engine went for, um, uh, it, went, you know, it had to be rebuilt at the beginning of the year. Um, and of course, just as the engine was about to come back and we were going to uh, build the car, um, uh, of course, the lockdown happened. So we all got a bit stuffed. And, so yeah, so it's, it's engineless at the minute. Which is a shame, but yeah, but they are fabulous. Lots of uh, lot of it, all the history, of the, the races we've done with it. Look, and just um, uh, it's just it's so much fun. And um, the one thing that you learn when you start racing in the classic series is um, about who you want to be racing against, which events you want to go and do. Um, and uh, you know, we've we've raced it. At the, we haven't done Silverstone Classic. We've done Donington Historic twice, um, and we've raced with a classic touring car. Uh, uh, series as well, um, and we've done we've done well with it. I mean, um, Donington Historic. We were racing against you know some very famous drivers. Uh, we were way out of our depth. Um, Steve Soper uh, is a very famous name that springs to mind. Um, 35 cars on the grid. The first year we did it, we finished seventh. Last year we finished eighth. And when you bear in mind, you know Andrew Jordans of the world um, that are um, you know the masters at, at this sort of thing and. Um, uh, the, the, the guys that finished in the top six, you know, they all turn up with the big lorries. They've all got spare engines, spare gearboxes. Um, and this was me pulling a trailer with my spanners rolling around on the floor. So, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, I, I'm quite pleased with that, really. I'm quite pleased. Um, and then this thing, <laughs> this thing is, um, uh, is probably the worst car I've ever bought. Um, I've owned it for more than 15 years. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, ugh, I don't know, 17 years now. And, uh, and when I was younger, I always had a Golf. Uh, I loved the Mark 1 Golf GTI. Um, and, um, uh, and this, what I should, uh, what I, the mistake I made with this is I, I turned it into a, into a track car um, when I was, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago. Uh, and I put the wrong engine in it. So it's got a 20 valve turbo engine in it. Um, it's incredibly fast, almost undrivable. Um, the suspension is too stiff for the road. It's fine on the track. Uh, what I should have done was put the, um, the Mark II 16-valve engine in the car with the Mark I GTI gearbox. That would have been the right thing to do, um, but I didn't. I put a 20-valve turbo engine in it instead. Um, anyway, um, 
And there, this is, I mean, it's just a stripped out, ridiculous, silly, silly, silly car to have. Um, oh, I dread to think how much money I've spent on this car. Uh, I won't get any of it back. Um, but um, but, it, but, it's, I, but I just can't help but love these Mark 1 Golfs. They are loads of fun. Um, and it's in really good and painted it all. Um, roll cage, couple of seats for a couple of would-be idiots that want to um, whiz round in it for a day. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is lovely. I'm probably not in love with it very much at the minute, um, uh, <laughs> but I need, to, um, I need to spend a bit more time with it. Um, yeah, it is still a great car, Dave. You're right, I think so. Um, and then this, um, uh, this uh, is not my car, um, uh, but belongs to Ian Callum, the car designer. Uh, and uh, he wants to sell it, and I get on with him very well. He's a lovely, lovely fella, and on the basis that most of my inventory is based on cars that he's designed, um, he, um, uh, he asked me uh, if I would sell it for him. Um, so uh, we're marketing this lovely, lovely little beetle, um, which has had a huge amount of work gone into it, um, and it's all rather lovely. It's all rather lovely. I wonder if um, we have a little peek in here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. An engine. Um, Porsche cooling fan. I mean, look at the work that's gone into it. This is not a five-minute job to do all of this. Big carburetors. Lots of shiny things. Making engine bays look nice and pretty and shiny like that takes a huge amount of work. Um, and people that, people that have done it or, you know, even if you haven't, you still, you still appreciate it. Um, it is really clean. Um, Porsche look alike -y wheels, but it all just adds to the charm of the charm of that car. Oh, I think that's a fabulous little thing. Now, where are we? Huh. Speaking of charm, so we we actually took this car in part exchange um, six years ago, maybe, and it was so similar. Um, it was so similar to the Mini that I had when I was uh, 16, 17, uh, and I just had one of those moments, and I got all wobbly over it and thought, oh, I maybe want to keep it. So this is, this is a Mark II Mini. Um, so it's a Mark II, not a Mark I. It's a super deluxe, which is a really, really, really rare car. And believe it or not, some of the Mark II Minis, although people go for the, um, uh, the Mark I's more, the Mark II's are actually rarer, uh, and I think that... Um, uh, it makes it a really interesting car. It's, it's had a restoration, and uh, it comes with the original service book. Uh, it's got original service receipts. It's got an original mileage log. Now, I don't know if, you, I don't know if any of you can uh, relate to this, but my grandfather, um, I, remember, I remember well, uh, he would write down where he'd been, uh, how far he'd gone, how much fuel he'd used, and keep a log of the mileage that he was doing in the car. Um, and this car has got all of those original, all of that original uh, paperwork to go with it, which is kind of, um, which is kind of fun, a kind of fun thing, really. Um, I remember, um, I'll tell you again, a little uh, silly story. So when we were, when I was at school and we were 14, and, um, and of course all the, all the boys are all sort of saying, oh, you know, I want to get a car when I'm 17, and, you know, is your dad going to buy your car? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, um, uh, and I remember one evening... Uh, we all egged each other on to go home and asked our parents uh, about what we were going to do when we were 17. It's like, oh, Dad, I'm, what am I going to do when I'm 17? I want to have a car and all this sort of thing. And, um, and my dad, I mean, we, my, dad, my dad came from, we were all grew, um, born in the northeast. Uh, my dad ca literally came from a mining village. And as you might imagine, um, if you want something, you've got to go and earn, earn it, son, type of conversation. So when, and you had to pick... <laughs> brave interior, very, yeah, but very typical of the time. Uh, and you had to pick the right moment with my dad. I had to catch him at the right time. So I'm sitting there and uh, we're having dinner and I said to my dad, Dad, I'm going to be 17 in three, three years' time and, oh, you know, I'm, what am I going to do with a car and all this sort of thing? And my dad being my dad just sort of said, well, we'll have a little bit of a think about that, son, sort of thing. So the following morning, we all went back, all went back to school, varying degrees of success and failure from my mates about um, whether their parents were going to buy them a car or whether they're all told to get stuffed. Anyway, so a couple of weeks went by, Friday evening, 
my dad had clearly had a good week at work and uh, he's, had, he's got a glass of wine on the go and he said to me, he said, oh, I've been thinking about that car that you were talking about wanting. And I said, oh yeah. And he said, well, he said, tomorrow morning, we're going to go see a man about a car. He said, I want you dressed and ready to rock and roll. Seven o'clock tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, we're going to go see a man about a car. I said, okay, fine. So of course, I'm absolutely beside myself, super excited. And um, we went, uh, so my dad, <laughs> my dad being my dad. Um, so he took me to... Um, uh, so the following morning, I got up, I was up really early. I was up at six o'clock, couldn't sleep. I went downstairs, made him some toast, made him a cup of coffee, and I'm pushing, pushing, pushing to think, what on earth, what on earth are we going to go and do? And he, um, and he came upstairs, so just hor horizontal about, about all, all of it. And he, um, uh, we got in the car, drove to the local pub, which was a pub that we, you know, we all went to every now and again. I'm thinking maybe it's the kitchen porter's car. I'm thinking maybe it's the chef's car. Whose car is it? Is it a waiter? And we pulled in, and there's a couple of cars hiding around the back. And I thought, here we go. And uh, he, uh, oh, we went inside, and uh, the guy that owned the restaurant, this Spanish fellow called Paco, and my dad said to me, he said, um, he said, this is, uh, he said, John, he said, this is Paco. He said, Paco and I have been talking about your dollar about having a car in three years when you're 17, and we've come up with an idea. And uh, my dad said, if you work here every, every Saturday and Sunday morning from 9 till 12 for a pound an hour, we think that between now and when you're 17, you'll be able to afford a car. And my bottom lip, my bottom lip had a bit of a wobble, and Paco passed me the mop and said, there you go, you can go and start cleaning behind the bar. And that's what I did. And three years later, uh, I bought a Mini. So um, uh, a, a great lesson in life, as always, uh, from my dad. And um, yeah, but it's a, it's a good lesson. Anyway, back to Aston's again. That's Toro Red, Toro Red with no uh, wheel centres, but again, we've just bought it before the lockdown. It's my excuse for everything at the moment, we just bought it before lockdown. It has got a waiting preparation in it, just to make sure. But this is lovely. These are great value cars. This is a Sport Shift, so it's a Sport Shift gearbox, then 34,000 miles from new. Phantom grey leather with red stitching. Really lovely place to be. <laughs> Legend, thanks. That's a really, really, really nice, that's a nice car. And we like red, red's really popular. Um, but yeah, so again, because most of the, you know, we've got a lot of silver and grey in here, so when we get something that's red or blue or a different colour, even white, um, it's always, always of great interest to people. And again, in white, red brake calipers, slightly bigger wheels, that's... I quite like this actually. We're a bit unsure about it when we were off to it over the. But that's that's nice. Black with red stitching, manual gearbox, 4.7 engine. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks really smart actually. And the more I look at it, the more the more I like it. Any issues with roofs on Astons? Um, no, actually, they're pretty good. Um, what makes a, a roof? The only thing that makes the roof, gives you a roof problem, is if the window modules don't work properly. So the windows have to be able to remember their parameters in terms of how high up they can go and how, how low down they go when you're opening and closing the windows. Um, if the roof module gets a little bit confused and uh, doesn't want to work properly, it will stop the roof from operating because the roof and the window need to work together in conjunction when they go up and go down, if that makes sense. Um, it's few and far between, but yeah, it is a problem. Um, that... Um, that's really special. That's really, really, really special. So people talk about supercars, you know, Lamborghini, Hurricanes, Ferraris, bits and pieces, you know, the 430s, the 458s, 488s. That is a supercar. Um, I bought that in 2014 uh, in Germany. 2014, 2013. Came back to the UK. Uh, I had done 6,000 kilometres at the time. We sold the car to a lovely fella. Uh, he's had it ever since. It's been looked after by Porsche Reading. Um, and we've now got it back, uh, and it's, uh, I mean, I can't get uh, more excited about a Porsche than I can about one of these Carrera GTs. Um, these things are super, 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 super rare and quite an incredible car. Um, black interior. That's the view of the cockpit. Look how, it, look how high that gear lever comes up on the console. Everything wraps around you so that when you're in the car, everything wraps around you. The seats wrap around you, the console wraps around you, the doors, look all the carbon fibre on the doors, look. All of that, carbon fibre, absolutely everywhere, um, which of course is akin to the rest of the car. 
this or F40 to drive, depends on where you're going to go. Um, and the reason for that is, so Carrera GT, air conditioning, hi-fi, target panels, look, the roof comes off, it splits and fits into the front section of the car. Um, so if you're going to go to the south of France and back, you'd want to take that. It's, low, it's, it's, it's comfortable, it makes sense. Um, and the F40, you're going to need headphones <laughs> by, the time you get to, by the time you get to the Eurotunnel um, and uh, probably some padding for your back. Um, it's not as comfortable by a long, long, long way. Um, uh, air conditioning doesn't work properly in the F40, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, uh, uh, especially my exhaust, yeah, quite. Um, so, but yeah, Carrera GT, uh, absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning car. Um, that's, uh, yeah, very special. Lots of Le Mans links to talk about with those cars too. Um, here we go, another 4.7 Vantage. In fact, there's a pair of 4.7 Vantage here. Both looking rather similar. But again, we're talking about difference of interiors. So again, 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 look, another black uh, interior. But people, it's, it's, it, they're, they're, it, they're very, very popular. And that's got, this is a moon shadow interior. So it's a really different colour. Very different colour. Um, and then this is Volcano Red, so that's just a little bit more of an electric red, um, which I quite like. Blue as well, love, love having some colour. Blue again with a light interior. Sandstorm, manual gearbox, that's lovely. And this is a later, this is a quite a young quite a young 4.7 that's a Vantage S that's nice as well yellow calipers, really eye catching lots of carbon fibre later, later dash that's called a haptic dash, it's touch sensitive Aston Martin catching up with their interior infotainment systems but that's really nice And again, another 4.7 Vantage. A bit more blue. This time the interior is cream rather than sandstorm. So it's just that little bit lighter interior then. Uh, now this, this is a special car. Um, this is a manual Vantage V12 Roadster. Really rare car. Skyfall Silver. Lots of carbon, manual gearbox. That is a knockout car, a really rare car. They made about 100 cars. Um, and again, when you're talking about the new Vantage versus the old one, which car looks better? Is there a preference? I think that a lot of people are still leaning towards these older um, last of line Vantages. I think it's a really pretty car. When you look at it, there's a lot to look at on the bodywork. Um, it's interesting, it's a bit more arty. I think the new one's got lots of smooth lines, but there's not a lot of interesting little different pieces to look at. So obviously in the bonnet, you've got all of the vents, lots of carbon around the lower section. Look at all the lines down the side of the car. Lots and lots of detail to look at. And I think that that is a really, really mega car. More mega cars up here as well. Uh, here we go. Let's get on with it. This is the GT8. This is a GT8, which looks really bright blue in this picture, but it's much darker actually in real life. Um, uh, that is a really special bit of kit. So GT8s, 100, one of 150 cars. Car number, car number 14, I think. Let's have a look inside here. Some orange stitching to match the exterior. Look at the colour of that interior. All Alcantara. Carbon doors. Lots of weight loss management. Race car mentality with these things. It's done 2,000 miles from new. It's not been very far at all, this thing. Great big spoiler. You can never have a big enough spoiler. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start it, but I'm going to ask my colleague Matt to hold the phone because... It's going to be loud, and I don't know what to do. We'll see how it goes.
Dawson. Thank you. I don't know if that's um, I don't know if that, how that sounded, but um, uh, it's it's pretty loud. That's for sure. Um, they are uh, they're really 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 uh, sought after. We sold six of them through last summer. Um, this year has been a little bit different, obviously, but they uh, they've got their own. And the GT8 clubs a real thing. Uh, it's a great way for everyone to get together. They all go off and enjoy the cars. Um, uh, they're they're a really special car. They're a really special cars. No doubt about that. Um, and a DB7 Zagato. This is car number 13 uh, of 99 cars. Um, really, really, really rare. Really special. Um, uh, even if you're not a DB7 fan, you have got to appreciate. Um, you've got to appreciate uh, what these are all about. This is £275,000 we're asking for this car. All the interiors were bespoke. That is a fairly standard uh, interior for one of these. Quilted leather. And I can see the see one of that, but again, look at the back. The round lights are akin to the DB7 Vantage Volante uh, we looked at earlier on as well. Uh, what else have we got in here? Harley Davidson motorcycle. Look. It's a different thing. Oh, hang on. What have I gone and done? Hang on. I've just gone and done something I shouldn't have done. Where are you? No, we're back. Um, that's quite fun. Again, this is all just to do, I mean, most of us here ride motorbikes of some description. V12 Vantage, coupe, manual gearbox, black, black. Lovely car. We, we sold this car last in 2018, um, and it's back. And um, uh, I think that that's, that's really sharply priced, £57,850. We're asking for that car. Lots of service history. Very, very lovely car. Bit of an Italian theme going on. Um, this uh, Ducati motorcycle, really, really different um, bike. We're going to talk bikes very briefly. Hyper Motard 950 SP. These things are, uh, if you want something that's just huge amounts of fun, um, not going to do 150 miles an hour, um, but will do 80 miles an hour and you have so much fun doing it, um, uh, then this is the kind of thing to look at. When it comes to road riding, you've got to manage your speed. Um, you don't get too carried away, um, and this thing is just, it's just silly. Um, it's silly, but fun silly, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and you know what, I really like it. I mean, it looks a bit odd. It's very different. I couldn't quite get my head around it to start with, but once you get the hang of riding it, um, you really do uh, appreciate it a whole lot more. Uh, what else have we talked about? We haven't talked about that, of course, but um, this. Now, again, when you, were, when you were younger, I couldn't afford one of these. They were getting stolen left, right and centre. Um, couldn't get anywhere near them, um, and um, I always, always wanted one. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that everyone in the country, you've got to have some sort of love for um, for Ford and the Cosworth relationship. Um, uh, and I just think these things are absolutely mega. Um, uh, I've had that car for quite a long time. Um, when I bought it, uh, it was I'm the third owner of it. The first owner um, passed it on to his son. Um, uh, and then I bought it. So it's been in the family. It's got full history. It's got absolutely everything going for it. Uh, I just, I can't help. I think it's just a fab. And even by today's standards, you know, the handling on is absolutely brilliant. Um, they, uh, they're not the fastest, fastest thing in a straight line, but they're close enough. And um, I think that they, I just love the look of them. You know, when we're talking about design and detail, and again, talking about Ian Callum again, but you, it, design and detail on the cars, and look at all the different angles on the panels, the different shapes. The big spoiler on the back. Everything on this car, it all does something. Um, I remember I had, we had an evening once where people were asking Ian Callum about these rear spoilers and saying, you know, does it actually do anything? What on earth is the point in it? Uh, and he could not have gotten his soapbox more um, talking to us all about downforce, rear wings, uh, and the reasons for it. And, of course, it was um, for um, the rallying, of course, back in the day. But this is, it. This is a later car. It's a small turbo uh, engine car. Lux model, so it's got the original glass sunroof. Um, and it's got air con and all the trimmings and again you know how fussy I'm about my interiors look at the leather in, leather seats the leather seats it's hardly been used this thing's done about 36,000 miles now um, uh, and I, yeah I think that's I, I love those I love that car it's it's completely daft but yeah why not speaking of daft and the elephant in the room this thing uh, wow I mean I, I've, I, I'm a very very lucky boy with this uh, I've had it for 10 years um, 
we've bought and sold quite a few F40s over the years, not as many as, um, uh, as others, um, but I used to work for Ferrari back in, uh, back in the 90s, and um, that's, when my, uh, that's where my love of Ferraris uh, came from. And um, uh, as I say, I've had this thing for 10 years. Uh, I've now done 28,000 uh, kilometres in the car. When I bought it, it had only done, I don't know, slightly less than 10. Um, I do use it. It's not perfect, um, but I have an awful lot of fun uh, in this car. Um, but it does get it does get used quite a bit. Um, I put seat covers on the seats because I'm trying to look after um, the material on the seats, which um, which isn't uh, uh, no, it's kind of brittle. It does get it does get worn quite a bit. But again, uh, you know, I, the, these things these things. When I, I remember when I first had a going one, it was just the most thrilling experience. Um, uh, yeah, non cat, non adjust. Um, and um, it was like having a rocket strapped to your back. I mean, it's just, it's, it's explosive, it's scary. Um, uh, again, no ABS, no traction, and it's, it's it, for me, this is what supercars are really, really about. I mean, this is a different level now, but when I bought it 10 years ago, of course, you know, um, <laughs> remortgaging the house and, uh, and everything else, and you beg, stole, and did whatever I had to do to, um, to, to, to keep it. Um, but when we were buying and selling them at the time, Every time we sold, um, every time we sold one, I needed another seventy-five thousand pounds to go and buy the next car, and I got to the point where I just couldn't afford to keep up. Um, and um, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so I kind of said to my wife, uh, "I've got a great idea." And um, yeah, did a lot of did a lot of did a lot of borrowing, did everything we could, and um, and sure enough, we've we've had it ever since. Um, we look after it here. We did we did initially um, get for you know the local great and Graypool um, did some servicing work on it to start with. But as the old guys left and the young guys turned up, I remember I was, was uh, uh, getting it, getting it serviced one time and they didn't know how to dip the oil properly and stuff. And I thought, oh, forget this. So um, we've maintained it ourselves ever since. Um, I must admit, when I get stuck with it, and I do, when we have electrical uh, problems and things go wrong. Uh, Bob Houghton's not far from me. Um, they're fab He's a fabulous bloke, great uh, Ferrari specialist. He's been around forever and a day. knows his, knows these things in, in, inside and, and outside. And um, uh, he's always the person I go to when uh, when I don't know what to do with it anymore. Um, but I wonder if we can. What key? Well, um, uh, we'll, well, okay, we're going to fire it up. Um, it's not been started for quite some time, so I'm hoping it'll go. Um, but we'll fire it up. But I'll get um, I'll get Matt to stand um, uh, quite far away and. Um, We'll see if you can, uh, see if we can uh, make some sort of uh, sense out of the noise at all. Oh. I don't know. Um, did that? Did, did that? Did that, did that sounded all right. But it just sounded like a complete mess. Um, but yeah, the one, see, one of the things that I did with this car um, was the original um, uh, silencer. Uh, the original silencer should fit uh, across this great big section here, and it got, it got so hot, and I had six foot flames coming out of the back of it. Um, the problem was that whenever we went on a run, and I'd get back, and this, this top section here would get so hot, you literally couldn't touch it. And of course, as we know from watching recent um, social media things, they do tend to catch fire. Um, and again, being carbon fibre, that burns beautifully. Um, so what I, what I wanted to do was re to reduce the amount of heat created at the back of the car. Um, and also, the original silencers, were the, the, the cars are too quiet. So uh, we custom made that exhaust system I say we, uh, uh, this guy down at um, uh, Bista did it. Uh, it did an amazing, amazing job. In fact, I, I, I get all, I don't know if you can see, no, you can't really see through it, but um, it, it did such a great job of making exhaust system. So it, it's, it's hellishly loud, um, but 
uh, it, it dissipates the heat beautifully, uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah, and that's um, uh, what, we, what we can do with that. Yes, uh, we'll, I'll open the back of it up. I don't know if, in fact, let me see if it's locked there. Oh, no, it's unlocked. That's helpful. I might have to put the phone down while I do it. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put the phone over here just for a second while I do it. Hang on, if I stick this on there like that. Uh, no. no it's right there. It's Give me two seconds. Um, oh, I know. Can you see that? You can just see. Give me a second. I'll go and open that. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. So, this is um, what one of these things look like. Um, everything's bolted essentially to the tub. Um, great big garden rollers, as I believe they're described as uh, big fat tyres. Original suspension. There's loads of detail with these cars to look at, and I know um, Tom Hartley Jr. does a great um, um, uh, video about F40s, talking about all the weird and wonderful secret bits of it, and it's fascinating uh, to listen to him talking about it all, because there is, I mean, there's so much to them. Uh, they really are quite incredible. Um, but, yeah, this exhaust, this is, this is the exhaust that we made. I, mean, I, I quite like the, the detail. This, this welding's just absolutely spot on. Um, we, this frame is all built, made for it to box the gearbox. Three pipes, look. So it makes a load of um, makes it makes a right old racket. But I have to say, when it's when it's warm, the sound of the car changes as the metal expands and contracts, um, and it does make a, it is work of art. Yeah, and it makes an absolutely superb, superb noise. But that is that is the back of that. Um, I have to say, I love messing around with this. I love I love when it comes to servicing time, getting it getting down and dirty, getting keeping it clean because it does get dirty. Um, uh, as you might imagine, but yeah, no, I love I love messing with that. I love messing with that. So that is, in a nutshell, that is, in a nutshell, um, our showroom. Now I'll tell you what. There's one more thing I, I want to show. There's one more thing I want to show you. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, flip this around for a second, um, like so. So there's one more thing I want to show you. I'm going to show you the workshop. Uh, now, we might have a little bit of a signal issue because I'm going to go from one building to another, but I'm going to walk quickly and it'll, um, it'll, uh, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but we'll come back here in a minute. There's one more thing I'm going to show you just for a bit of fun. That's a little bit of a top secret, but seeing that you're here and it's quite, this weather's amazing. Do you know what? Uh, if, if we, I mean, we're all in this lockdown situation. It's utterly, utterly weird, odd circumstance. But if it wasn't for this weather, we'd be in a whole lot more trouble. Especially if you've got, I mean, we've got, we've got some, my daughters would be beside themselves if they've been locked inside the house. Now, I'm going to flip you back around again. Like, oh, hang on, not like that, like this. Welcome to uh, uh, reception. Now, I'm going to show you something through here. This, so it's not just the modern stuff we do. Uh, we've also got one of those. Look at that. Look at that. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got, um, I've got goose pimples um, staring at that. Uh, and I've been looking at it quite a lot over the last 24, 48 hours. Um, that car uh, is a left-hand drive, DB5. Um, and it's been in that state, I believe, since the mid-90s. Um, it's a really, really, really special car. Um, I feel like I should, I don't know, bow or something um, when, I, when I look at it. I mean, look at the... Look at, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with it. There's so much for me to get excited about looking at this car. It clearly, at some point, um, has gone for uh, a bare metal paint. It used to be California Sage when it was new. It's now silver. Um, there's so much, so much to talk about with these, with these cars. Um, and I love, I love cars that are, you know, that are like that and just, just such a different thing. Uh, anyway, this is our workshop. Welcome to the workshop. 
Uh, obviously, not a lot going on uh, today, but so um, in here we do anything and everything, Aston Martin, uh, plus a few other bits and pieces, Ferraris and things. Um, uh, in here at the moment, this car in front of us, uh, this was uh, unfortunately, this unfortunately succumbed to a bit of water damage um, uh, back, uh, going back a couple of months ago. Um, look at the, look at the, uh, the gap underneath here. If you're going to go through a puddle in one of these cars and the water is that at that level or higher you will suck up all the water into your engine the air filters are housed in here low down um, and it's the first thing that um, uh, will write your engine off uh, and it's a real shame but we've done we must have done three or four engine replacements um, uh, January February March this year in fact that's the engine that was in it uh... Oh yeah, you can still see, look, I'll show you, for those of you that are interested, uh, inlet in, this is where normally the inlet manifold will go across the top of there. Look, you can still see the water in there, look. There was that much water in this engine. Look at this, this is, this is obviously not, uh, this shouldn't be any water in here at all. Um, and this thing had sucked up so much water, um, it hydraulic the engine with the pressure, um, and that was the end of that. Um, we always keep a spare uh, engine ready to go, just in case, so we can turn... V7, unfortunately, uh, might have uh, a similar issue. Uh, and then we've got a car here for some clutch work. Uh, that's our beloved little Ferrari that we've sold. Um, that's, um, we're just going to refurbish the wheels, uh, and then that's going to go. Um, that Vantage, we've just taken in part exchange. Um, so we've got a few bits and pieces to do to that before it goes into the showroom. Uh, this lovely, lovely uh, Land Rover Evoque. Um, uh, we've, uh, we took that in part exchange, we've sold it to um, uh, one of our uh, amazing nurses from the NHS, uh, from Oldham, uh, so that's waiting for her when, uh, uh, when she's finished. Um, um, and that's our workshop. But obviously, seeing that we've, uh, we've been a bit quiet, we've managed to paint the floor, so it all looks nice and sparkly and spangly. Some spare tyres, and normally, this is normally where the, the race car will be sat in here now, um, wheels off, axle stands on, and lots of work to do, ready to go. A uh, picture of it in action uh, from last year, Donington. Um, and that, in a nutshell, um, that's it, I think. Um, that is, um, I'll go back over the showroom. Um, but that's our workshop. And um, that is, gives you a little insight into, uh, into who we are and, uh, and what we do. Um, good way to spend an hour. It certainly is a good way. Is it? That's gone fast. That has gone fast. Um, well, I hope that was. Um, I hope that's what everyone wanted. I hope that was useful. It's kind of nice to have a bit of a poke around at someone else's um, someone else's pad and seeing what's going on. Um, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I could spend absolutely forever whittling on and um, boring everyone to tears with them. Um, uh, um, I don't know, looking at diff looking at different periods and things and whatever. Um, but um, but all in all, it's. Um, it's, it's great, really. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're really lucky to be, uh, to be here, uh, to be doing this. And um, it's, uh, it's, it has its good days and bad days, like everything else, I've got to tell you. But it's, uh, on the whole, it's pretty good, and we love it. And, um, uh, and if you want to come and work here, then the prerequisite is you've got to be, uh, got to be a bit car mad, motorbike mad, uh, one of the two. But, um, um, but, yeah, so that's, there we go. That's us, I think. What happens now? What happens now? I'll flick through this and see who's, go who's going on. Oh, I, can I can see other people now as well. Adam, are you there? Has Adam gone to make a cup of tea and forgotten all about it? Tell us that F50 story. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. So uh, I went, um, I bought an F50. Uh, in Germany, um, and it had done it done three thousand kilometres from new. It was absolutely beautiful, uh, and me and my uh, my, my sidekick, we, the two of us, we flew over there, went to look at this F fifty. It was just perfect. It had it just hadn't been anywhere. Beautiful carbon weave all over it, flight cases, everything that should come with the car was there. It was gorgeous, and um, we we did it. We did everything. Paid the guy the money, got on with him really well. He's actually a super bloke, and he turned around to us and said, um, 
He said, uh, said so when, uh, when, when's the transporter coming to, um, uh, to, bring to, <laughs> to take the car home? And we kind of looked at him and went, no, sorry, um, we're going to get in it now and we're going to drive it back to the UK. He was absolutely horrified. Um, and uh, we took this near new uh, F50, uh, drove it all the way home, had the most amazing uh, drive back in it. Um, French, uh, the French auto route in the pouring rain um, and it just handled beautifully it was so stable um uh, i mean not at crazy speeds in the rain but it was just stable 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 car and interestingly you know we talk about f40s and f50s and all the rest of it and what would you rather have um the the f50 the engine the way it drives everything they're just fantastic um they don't give you the they don't give you the kick in the back quite like the f40 does um uh, in terms of it, they're not doesn't feel as dangerous to drive um, but uh, uh, but it was just an epic epic thing to do, uh, you know. And, uh, and at some point, you look back and you, you look back at it and you think that I'm so glad that we did that and we didn't put it in transport and drive it home. So yeah, we drove it all the way back from um, uh, from Germany. Uh, just had the most amazing ride in it. Stopped over in Reims, um, parked outside some hotel, and then got up the following morning and did the and did the final leg um, uh, in the sunshine rather, rather than the rain, um, which was um, yeah, it was mega. Yeah, it was really mega. Um, uh, what else? Um, uh, we're, we're talking about the. Um, uh, what we're we talking about? We're talking about the. Uh, 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 we're talking about capris and things earlier on. Um, I remember when we were kids, we used to do. Uh, we used to have what we called our Christmas car, um, and the Christmas car was. Uh, um, the Christmas car basically meant that when we were seventeen, and you kind of want to learn how to drive a little bit, and you're waiting for some, uh, waiting for the winter. So we had the Coventry Evening Telegraph. We had fifty quid. And you had to go and get a car that was taxed and MOT'd until the end of January. So you wanted some ice and some snow. And you'd wait until late at night and you'd go out and find some lanes in the middle of nowhere. And we'd be rallying these cars around the, around the lanes like complete fools. Um, quite often ditching the cars into, uh, into the hedge and things, uh, climbing out of the car, leaving it there and then going to the pub. And then the following morning, um, the farmer would come and take you out and you had to give them a tenner or what have you. And there's lots of uh, apologising and things going on. Um, but back in the day, that was just kind of, that's how it was. So when we were talking about race cars and what cars did we want to uh, do we want to run and the full capri was really something that i really wanted to do um but uh, um but now the cortina um the cortina got uh, got the got the better of me really um uh really good fun thoughts on values of early v12 vantage um thoughts on values of those thoughts are thoughts are that they've gone from being well, they've gone from being 70 to 80,000. They're now down into the upper 50s. I think that um, I think that quite often with quite often with the manual V12 Vantage and with the, and with the manual DBS, um, the people that own the cars talk up the values of the cars, and then everyone dumps the cars in the market at once to sell them, and then the values come back down again. So. It's uh, it's really tricky. I think at the minute, I think they're in a very very good place. Actually, um, I think they're very popular. I think they've done. I think again, last year the cars lost a lot of money. Last year, and we've come into this year. We had January, February, March this year. We had mm, Boris bounce, whatever you want to call it. But we had very good starts of the year. Uh, we, we saw a lot of cars in January, February, uh, and even half of March. Um, and yeah, got, we've got a lot of interest in the Vito Advantage. We've got two cars in stock at the moment, and even whilst we've got this lockdown going on, um, we've had a number of inquiries, telephone conversations, um, people feel like they're ready to go. So I think at the minute, I think, I think they're, uh, they're pretty solid. Um, I think pretty solid. Um, uh, the GT8 and of last year at that level, we know that's there or thereabouts right. Pretty sure it would have gone by now if it wasn't for uh, other constraints. Um, very good cars, really popular, really popular car indeed. Um, so, oh, hang on, what does that say? Will a straight through pipe? I can't see. How do I see the? How do I see the? Um, how do I see the messages that are coming through? I don't know how to do that. Quick chat at the very bottom. Uh, Sorry, down, so down at the bottom, uh, you press those three dots again. There should be. You should be able to click chat. Oh yeah, got it. Uh, okay, here we go. Will a straight pipe exhaust back pressure changes negatively affect V12 S engine? Uh, no, I don't think it will. I mean, you, you, have a, you wouldn't want a straight through pipe from the manifold all the way back. Um, 
I don't think um, uh, I don't think that'd be very comfortable to drive. Um, DBS or Vanquish Valante? Good question. I'll probably go Vanquish Valante uh, personally. I think. Um, how many staff in our workshop? We've got three technicians in the workshop. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, they're very good. They're very good. They're very good. Um, we're super lucky um, with those guys. Um, they, uh, uh, yeah, Steve's been with us. Oh, 20, 2010, I think, 2011. Um, nine years, I think Steve's been with us nine years. We're pretty close to it. Um, uh, cheers, James. Um, yeah, Steve's been with us for nine years. Um, Steve came from Aston Martin. Knows, oh, he's just captain detail is Steve. Uh, uh, Neil, again, Neil's been with us now for, what, seven, eight years? Uh, and then James joined us last year. Um, uh, yeah, so we've got three technicians. That's great for us. That's, that's where we want to be. Um, helps us. That's just about gives the right balance looking after clients' cars looking after our own cars and, um, uh, and, and all the other weird and wonderful things that I throw at them that they probably don't want to do quite as much, but it's, um, yeah, it's all, all part of the fun. All part of the fun. All part of the fun. Um, what else? Anything else? Anything else or are we, or are we almost... Strangest buyer you have ever had? Um... I've, I've had a couple. Um, I don't know. Why I just have a think about that. <laughs> about that. Um, uh, need to lengthen garage and pass it to the Lambo. Yeah, we can have a Lamborghini. We can do that. That's straightforward enough. Yeah, we have to, we, you need to meet some weird and wonderful people. Most of them are wonderful, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, there we go. There we go. Yes, we offer a warranty. We warrant. Okay, warranty is good. Uh, interesting point. Um, I actually warrant all the cars myself. Uh, now, we used to uh, buy a third-party policy uh, for the cars that we sold, but, but because, we, because the level of preparation that we do, we're so thorough with everything that we do, we know, we know that when the car leaves here, it's as good as it's ever going to be. Um, and uh, we got to the point where I said, well, actually, I'm gonna, we're going to warrant everything ourselves. So everything we do now is in-house for 12 months. Uh, maximum claim payout would be £2,000 per claim, as per most uh, warranty uh, policies um, but you know if you buy a car from us and you're one of my clients we always take a very different view on absolutely everything uh, have I ever seen any was that any engines fail we've only ever had one engine failure uh, yeah we've had one we had one engine fail it was a it was an Aston Martin N430 it had done 19,000 miles from you the full Aston Martin history uh, the guy we sold it to, he's had five cars off us over the years. He's really good blokes. It's not like he'd taken the car and done something silly with it. Uh, he was on the M40, just tootling along. And the reason for the failure was a nut on one of the bolts on one of the uh, rods. It was the bottom end, and it uh, it let go big time. Um, uh, and the rod went through the side of the block, and um, the car turned up here. And, yeah, we we, uh, uh, we just did the right thing. It was, it was, it's not, it was, it was just one of those things. So... Um, uh, he bought it from me. That cost me twenty thousand pounds. That's just the way that goes. Um, uh, it's uh, it, that is just the way it goes. Um, what else did I say? Brian Testain. Brian, it's very good to see you. Um, I hope you're well. It's been ages. Um, Brian, you've missed you've missed the first hour. But uh, Brian, you know fine well you can come and say hello any time that you want to, uh, and um, and and uh, uh, for a coffee. I do hope you're well. Thanks, John. Very well indeed. Best of luck. It is. Um, there we go. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? No, I'd say, I'd say that's good, John. Are we okay? Thank you. Yeah, it's fab. Smash it. Well, uh, uh, stay safe, everybody, and um, uh, you're all very welcome to come down and see us as and whenever you wish to. And um, uh, hopefully we'll all be um, we'll be back up and running pretty soon I think so um, that's it I'll leave you all to have a lovely lovely Sunday and um, all the best <laughs>